Assalamu alaikum and good evening everybody. This uh, Welcome to the Zo Show. My name is Zohib Sadiq, uh, your weekly host of this inspiring program where I speak to uh, people about their journeys, uh, about their businesses um, and essentially kind of what drives them uh, in terms of being successful and what lessons and experiences that they have uh, that they can pass on uh, to you wonderful listeners. Uh, so my my fantastic guest for this evening is someone who I've known for quite a few years now, um, a successful businessman, a good friend of mine, uh, but I'll let him do the intro, actually. Um, but actually, I'll say his name, then he can do the intro. Uh, so, Vikash, uh, good evening, and how are you doing? Good afternoon, Zog. Well, good evening, depending on where you are. Um, <laughs> great, thank you. Yeah, no, great. Thank you for having me on. I uh, really do appreciate the uh, opportunity to come on. Uh, we have known each other a while, yeah. um, but like I said, it's been you know good to come on and you know share uh, things that I've experienced um, and gone through yeah. in life, and also my business life, obviously because yeah. they're different. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, been yeah. But so yeah, be, be, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fun to have no, me. no worries. Well, I think it's it'd be great to have you on because I know uh, you're somebody who, like I said, you have many experiences in life, in business, and we'll touch on some of the things that maybe some people don't know about you. Yeah. Okay. Um, which is always interesting to <laughs> you, know, you know to find to find out. Uh, but first of all, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, certainly. Um, um, born and bred in Midlands, West Midlands, born in Cov, uh, Coventry, sorry, yeah, born in Coventry, um, and basically moved to Birmingham when I was six months old, um, lived here ever since, went to school, college, university, um, et cetera, done the normal traditional route mm-hmm. that we took uh, back in the day, yeah. um, went and worked for several corporate like um, capital control and part of Cadbury's, which was um, IT net at the time, became Serco. Uh, worked there for a few years. Got to a point where I thought, okay, done. I'm going to give it a go myself. So I think it was about 2008, I think. Yeah, like 2007, 2008, where we decided, that, look, we're going to have a go at this ourselves. Um, set up a business uh, called Tri-IT, uh, based out in Tisley. Um, just doing your general IT support, network support, um, various you know, IT-related um, services, and got to a point where it kept evolving. So as you do with businesses, you just you have to keep changing uh, with whatever the demand you have. So got to a point where you know we were, we were just doing all kinds of various different things, and um, from there I was introduced to a colleague of mine from Preston. Um, and basically we decided, I'll tell you what, we're missing a bit of a trick here um, in the take homes business. Um, therefore, we, we changed. And now I've got, obviously, try a T-Store there who does the IT support, uh, network support type of things. And then on the other side, I have Core Network. Mm-hmm. So it's been a good journey. It's yeah. been a good journey. I mean, I'm still enjoying it, which is the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. It's the main thing is that we enjoy what we do. Yeah. And that's one of the important things I'll probably say if anyone wants to ever ask me, you know, why do you do what you do? Mm. Main thing for me is I enjoy it. Mm. Yeah, I do enjoy it. Mm. Of course, there's times where you, you know, you're putting your hair out, mm. but you know, you know, it's one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. not always, um, you know, smooth roads. There's always rocky roads that you have to accept. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's why I, um, yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah. I enjoy it, which is the main thing. Uh, in terms of, in terms of the industry that you're in, mm. Was it always a case of, did you know that you'd always work in IT and that kind of industry? No, it was, it was a bit of a weird one because I kind of fell into it, actually. It was a case where I think there's always a thing where I enjoyed maths. So, okay, maths is good. I used to do my sciences as well. I thought, okay, engineering, accountancy. You know, again, the traditional, mm. <laughs> the traditional, the traditional route, routes yeah, that we yeah. were supposed to take when we were kids. And I thought, okay, I stumbled upon uh, IT. And uh, I was actually good at it. Yeah, I was actually good at it. You know, I, I started off um, having my first job before I finished university, mm-hmm. actually. Um, I had my first job. I was actually working um, at the time the results came out. I always started, started my a full-time job uh, for his offshoot of uh, Seven Trent called Capital Controls. And um, I was there, you know, doing right at the very beginning of, you know, doing the first line um, of guess so I was taking calls and passing them on and not very interesting mm. but yeah so I'm one of them that I like challenging myself so if I don't challenge myself then I feel like I'm not achieving anything 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to sound a bit crazy, but that's just how I push myself yeah. uh, to be able to say, look, you know what? I can always do better. Yeah. So that's where I thought, okay, what we're going to do now is keep going. So I pushed the first line and went to second line and then like a kind of, okay, I can't get any more further here. And I moved on to uh, IT net, which was kind of based around the, the Cadbury's scene. So it was, um, I think it was an off break from Cadbury's actually. And um, they became Circo. So I was there for four and a half years. Yeah, it was about four and a half years where I did a variety of jobs. So I went, you know, up and down the, 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 the management scheme and whatever. So we got performance manager and stuff. So I thought, okay, let's get a bit more technical. Yeah, that's my, that's my, where I was more, well, I found my, my most um, enjoyable moments was yeah. technical, you know, doing something technical. So I went to, uh, from there, went to a place with experience. And um, that's where I, I realized, actually, you know what, this is where I need to think about my next move. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do I continue along this journey or do I take a, a jump? So I got to play with a couple of guys who I, 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 who I knew. I mean, so look, you know what? It's time for us to make that next jump. Mm. Um, so uh, we went away, thought of um, what we're going to do. <laughs> and then uh, hence the name Try IT, because there's three of us. <laughs> so Try IT came along and I thought, okay, you know what? Let's just give it a go. Packed up my job. Went and sat at a desk in in in, in Fairgate House in in, in Tisley. Look at what I was thinking. What now? <laughs> so, so it was good. So it was it was um, a what now moment where it's like okay, and um, it's been a good journey. Yeah, it's been a good journey. Just to kind of just to interject there on the what now moment. You mentioned that challenges. You're mm-hmm. somebody who really enjoys yeah. kind of like. Breaking, you know, breaking those challenges or, or challenging yourself to get to the next level. Mm. What would you say for anyone, for any listeners out there, mm. you know, whether they're young or experienced, yeah. whoever's listening right now or watching, watching the podcast, what is it would you say in terms of how can people identify those challenges or when is the right time to basically is to address the challenge? Yeah, there's two, there, I would say there's two things there. You've got the first one is, okay, are you enjoying it? Yeah. Is it, is it, has it become tedious? Has it become, you, 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 you know what you're doing. You're, you're there thinking, why am I here? Yeah. If you start questioning why I'm here and I get those moments, you know, I'm not going to say it doesn't, everybody gets those moments. As long as you can find that, you know, why am I here? But how do I get over that? Yeah. Cause we all have it where we have difficulty. It could be, you know, major, you know, issues that we have with businesses, small businesses is cash flow orders, you know, problems, supply issues at the moment. It's obviously the whole world is going through a, a, you know, a reaction where we can't get supplies of anything. Mm. You know, you're looking at things from metal to food to batteries to whatever. You've got a variety of things where you can't get supplies. Mm. Yeah. So, and prices, of course, cost of living, etc. I don't want to get political, so mm. let's move on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, the, you know, things like that are affecting, everything affected. You know, interest rates, wages. There's so many different things. You you don't know where your next headaches gonna come from. As long as you're prepared to go and go get over those headaches and say, right, okay, I know what I've got to do. Yeah, you've got to have a strategy in place. Say, you know what? If I if this happens, what would I do? Mm. Yeah, that for me that's something that we we've been quite fortunate with. Yeah, there's always been up and down moments in 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 our lives of triety and you know, cool and, and and it's it's a case of. How do you move and how do you get to that next? Yeah. That, what's that next step? Yeah. Yeah. Um, plan. Mm. Plan. You know, there's certain things like, you know, people sometimes laugh at me, but I love spreadsheets. Mm. I do. I love spreadsheets. <laughs> you, you, can't, you, can't you can't be a good spreadsheet. You really can't because. <laughs> you know, I never, thought I'd hear, I never thought I'd, I'd hear someone say that on this show, but <laughs> there we go. Yeah. The spreadsheet doesn't lie. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because, you know, a, a friend of mine, uh, he, he does it really well. He actually does it in verse. So he might say to you, okay, how much do you want in five years' time? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll give you an example. Five years' time, how much do you want? Yeah. I will say, oh, you know what? I'd love to have 500,000 pounds. Let's just use that as a figure. And he'll say, right, okay, this is how you get there. And it'll go backwards. And before you know it, you've got a vision, year one. Year two, year three, year four, whatever, whatever time scale it is. Yeah. You've got to the end. You know what? 
actually that's that's really good. I need five of them, four of them, two of them. That and then that focuses your mind. And that's another thing. Focus. Yeah. It's so easy to be distracted. Yeah, I'm one of the worst to be honest to be distracted. Yeah, but you know, you can um get distracted. So as long as you focus on your thing, on your whatever, whatever it is, yeah, whatever you do, focus on it. And that's probably what I, a lesson I've learned in life to be honest as well. Yeah. Where, yeah. you know, we've, we, ha- we have to focus on something. Yeah. We've spoken before about the early days of like when you were employed, you worked in various yeah. roles, and that you almost, you helped to develop systems or ways of working, that's right. which then you thought that your colleagues or employers adopted, and that you then felt that that was the way to move forward. Yeah. Um, how did you, what was the mindset behind that of thinking that, you know what, I'm going to do it my way? Stubbornness yeah. is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a small, but the thing is, it, it, it's quite easy because at the end of the day, you know, it, it is about, sometimes coming about you as a person mm. and people who do know me uh, will know that, okay, yeah, he, he's going to, he's going to think about it and then he's just going to do it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. If he falls over, but he'll get back up. And that's, that's another mindset where people can think of, oh, you know what? If I fall over, um, how do I get back up? And people sometimes can't find their way. And for me, it was very straightforward, you know, um, a bit of prayer. Yeah. Goes a long way, I believe. Mm-hmm. And, and for me, a bit of, you know, dedication, mind, mind, mindsets, very important, very, very important. Um, you know, having that will. To be able to do it, focus again. All these keywords that people will chant about as being, you know, a magic formula. There's no magic formula. It's mm. a, a case of, you know, am I going to do it? And again, I think I think there's a big element of luck as well. Yeah, I'll give you a great example of someone I know who was at the right place, right time, picked up a contract, you know, IT. The company didn't want it, and um, he basically, him and a colleague said, "Well, let, let's let us do it." So they left. That contract became a million pound contract. Yeah. Wow. And before you know it, I think in 10, 12 years, 13 years, whatever it is now, they're probably worth about 25 million pound wow. business. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. They're my supplier. Because <laughs> 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 I can't tell their name. So if that's their story. Yeah. That's how they began. Yeah. And there, there are so many instances like that. You don't know what's going to happen around the corner. Mm. Yeah. You, you could stumble upon something. And it happened with us, to be honest. You know, you, you, you go somewhere to do something completely different and Something else happens and you don't know that, but you've got to have the mindset to find that, to mm. see, to see the opportunity. When you see the opportunity, to go for the opportunity. Mm. Yeah? yeah. That go, go, go. I don't know if people find sometimes cheap to say, but you never not selling. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, well, what do you mean? It's like, you never know. You could go for a meal in a restaurant mm. and you're sitting there and you're, you know, you've got no signal on your phone. Obviously, I'm coming to IT now. Mm. You, you, you've got a signal on your phone. You got no Wi-Fi. You can't get a, can't make a phone call. You can't do anything. What's the biggest thing? Have you got Wi-Fi? No, we haven't. There you go. Bang. <laughs> I can give you a Wi-Fi solution. That will work. <laughs> so yeah. you never know what, what might happen. Yeah, they might not want it. They might not be part of their business strategy. Mm. But at least you put the seed in their mind. Yeah. And just cheekily need your business card as you walk out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's a very... You've got a very kind of patented method there, you could say, yeah, or well, your, your, own, your own method, you yeah, could say. That, that's, that's how right. you approach things. Yeah. Give me an example of something that you learned when you were employed mm. that you thought, what was an example of where, let's say, something that, a lesson that you learned that yeah. you then took into being self-employed? Yes, it, for me, very straightforward. Mm. Don't lie. Mm. Yeah. What I, what I find when sometimes, you know, working, working for these big corporates, you know, they... Don't always tell the truth. Or do, no, not don't. I can't, I can't, I can't, they didn't tell the truth. Let's just pass things. They didn't tell the truth. And I struggle with that. Yeah, a little bit. Because it's like, just tell the truth and then you get respected for it. Yeah. So another, another word, respect. Yeah. Because you, you know, I know for a fact that's something I took into my business. I said, look, you're going to do it. You just tell the truth. If we've messed, if we've, if we've made an error. Yeah. Then that's on us. Okay, we have to accept that. We have made errors. Yeah, I won't give you examples, but we have made errors that have cost us money. Um, you know, and, and, and vice versa. If my client makes an error, then I'm fully justified and expected to say, you have to pay for that. That is upon you or your employee. And that's, it's part of the contract. 
Mm. It's very straightforward. It's it's black and white, which I like. Mm. I'm not. I don't like grey. Mm. Yeah, black and white, straightforward. It's there. You've made a mistake. You have to pay. Mm-hmm. If I make the mistake, then it's on us. Mm. Yeah, and there's plenty of examples I'll give you with you know viruses, etc. They're all they're all out there. You know, being hacked, being whatever. Yeah, and that's another thing that we, we're quite keen on. You know, I learned that it's better to be upfront and tell people from the outset this is a vulnerability. Mm. Okay, so per- that person might not be prepared to listen to that vulnerability. They might turn around and say to you, "Actually, you know, I'll get, I'll get by, mm. I'll get by." When it goes wrong, and it's a "I told you so" moment, mm. yeah. You can use it once. Mm. Don't overplay it. Yeah. <laughs> and then basically, try and try and just help them. Yeah. Try and help them because they'd always remember. Mm. Yeah. People always remember. Yeah. We always say people have a short term memory. Yes, they do. Yeah. I, I've I've had instances where you know, we've saved businesses from going under. Mm. Okay. Because we've gone in there, saved their IT system, brought them back online. You know, work round the clock, etc. To to do that. Um, you make a first. I would say a minor error. I will say that, but it's a minor error to us. And they would absolutely hammer you. Mm. You're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. Then you know, okay, this is not a give and take. Yeah, yeah. So thankfully, you know, Touchwood, I've had clients for, you know, coming on now, we've been going 15 years. Well, you know, my longest client I've had is 13 years. And, um, you know, he, he basically knows. He gets phoned all the time. He gets, he tells me himself. Vic, so and so, so and so, you know, I had a phone call last week from this company, that company, this company, that company. He teases me. Mm. Yeah, he teases me. Uh, to say, look, Vic, you know, you, you know, don't, don't put your price up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is, you know, so, yeah. But again, you know, you can have that friendly banter as long as you have, you also have that other side of the thing where you can be serious and say, we've got a problem here. Mm. Yeah, we have to address this problem. It's going to cost you money. Mm. And that's, that's just, that's, yeah. Been my method mm. that I've, I've had. A honesty. B just be just tell the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, be, up be, be, be up front. Yeah. yeah, be up front. Don't hide behind a mistake you've made. Yeah, face it full on and admit that you've made that mistake. Mm. Yeah, they'll appreciate you more mm. because what will happen is that will then make you fix that problem. Mm. Mm. You know, you got it. Yeah. And I, I want to talk about IT in general. Yeah, that's why other things. There's so many different examples yeah, that you yeah, put yeah. on there. Where you know you turn around to people and say, you know what, guys, we, we really messed up here. Mm. Yeah, how do we fix it? Oh, we just have to go rebuild it or mm. rebuild it, or you know, if it's a a wall or whatever, put it back up. You know, um, you order the wrong thing, we order the right thing then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know what I mean? Just yeah, yeah. keep that in stock, take yeah, the yeah. hit, yeah. make it back some other way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got an example I can use from you know one of my clients. They do that. They do uh, windows and doors, and I'm sure they've ordered. Wrong size doors and windows. <laughs> yeah. But they don't turn around the customer and say, Oh, actually, you know what? Sorry, you have to pay again. No. Yeah. They maneuver it around, shift it here and there. And they're very, very successful. Yeah. 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 yeah so some good. strong relationships there that you created with your clients over the years mm. and people in general that you deal with. Mm. Now you run how many businesses are you involved in at the minute? I, I'm, I work with, well, I part of two that we I have, I basically own, well, work with. Yeah. And I work alongside of a friend of mine uh, in Preston. So, Busy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> busy. Yeah. 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 Busy yeah. life. Busy yeah. life. And it's interesting because, you know, when I speak to people, you know, a lot of business owners, you know, I, I always, one thing I, I always ask is, I'll ask it now is, is what's that boundary between business and personal life? So for, for someone who's involved in three businesses, yeah. what advice do you have for people now who are, let's say, you know, str- maybe struggle to balance their time or priorities mm-hmm. or, or whatever? What, what tips do or advice do you I have? Had, I had the same scenario where, there was no boundary. So it may have been 60 hours. It may have been 65 hours, maybe 70 hours. I wasn't keeping track. Yeah, I wasn't keeping track. Blink of an eye, one, two, three years ago. Yeah, don't let that happen. There has to be black and white, simple. It's in your contract. Yeah, you got a contract there with somebody. I recommend everybody have a contract. If you haven't, yeah, have one. <laughs> That's the first thing. Yeah, get a contract. In the contract, stipulate. Yeah, the opening hours, the calling hours, when are things chargeable? Simple, yeah. If you have a contract from myself, it will say in there, this is covered, this isn't covered. And this is not covered. I can't make it more clearer. 
and there's a list there of things that are not covered. The hours are there. If you want to talk out of hours, and I have, I've had it, and I still get it now. I'll get an email on a Saturday where someone will say, oh, can't do this. Then they know. Okay, if if Triot or Core or NetDeck, whichever one responds, yeah, to that call, it's chargeable. You can't try to say to me, oh, we didn't know. But actually, you did know if you signed it. <laughs> yeah, he's, and that's another one. I think people do love playing there. Oh, I didn't know. Card. Yeah, I didn't understand. Okay, you didn't understand, but you signed it. Yeah, it's it's there in black and white. Yeah. So it's, it's straightforward. So the boundary, you've got to set a boundary. Uh, one of my favorite ones that I use is my phone's like a hot phone. Yeah, you, people know my number. I've had that number since the business started, so it hasn't changed. So people will ring me, you know, at weird times and on the weekend. So what I do do. My own method, come six o'clock, four past six, whatever it is, it's off to favourites only and comes on at 8.30, yeah? People might try and say, well, actually, you shouldn't have personal and uh, business mobile same number. I agree sometimes. So you could get another phone if you wish and just turn that one off. Mm. <laughs> just turn that one off. Biggest one we have, and I think the busy, biggest issue we have is, is email. Yeah, email is a massive one or social media. Because what seems to happen is we, we have our friends, business colleagues, etc., all on the same, say, Facebook or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. All, they're there. Yeah. So if they want to get hold of you, drop you a message, yeah? Oh, you know, you know so, so we, we have a bit of a problem on your you know Facebook page or whatever, yeah? If you're dedicated, which, you know, most people are thinking, oh, man, I better call them, mm. yeah? That's the way of getting around it. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of how far... What kind of boundary do you want to create? Yeah. Yeah. How far are you willing to go? Yeah. Now, we have, you know, we've, we've made it clear to, to our clients and we have mm-hmm. had it where they'll, they'll drop a mission on, on a Saturday and we'll just turn around and say, actually, you know what? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll probably just remind, you know, say the, the director or whoever that look, they, they did call us on a Saturday, please, mm-hmm. you know, and have, have systems in place that prevent that. So for argument's sake, our phone system switches off 5.30. Um, goes to voicemail weekends no bank holidays no because we, we actually just quick button goes to voicemail office is now closed mm. uh, leave, leave a message mm. yeah and, and you know as long as you have the functionality and, and the facility of being able to pick up that message so have that have the systems in place that allow you to have that you know continuity mm. which is a big a big word yeah. continuity business continuity is very big yeah, some people run on. It still surprised me today where I see people run on, you know, thin threads of, you know, if internet goes down, they can't work. Okay, you know that. Mm. So what's your backup plan? I will just call BT. Oh, good luck. Yeah, mm. I'll see you in forty-eight hours time. Then mm. that's how yeah, it is. That's it. Yeah, yeah. With, with, with certain, what is your SLA? Some people don't even know what their SLA is for their, you know, their core business product. You know, for internet, your average SLA. That you get is 48 hours, mm. 24, 48 on average you can get, you know. So you that's your day-to-day mm-hmm. livelihood that runs on that. And if it goes, what are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. That's when I that's when we decided that look, you're missing a trick. This is probably about about five years ago, six years ago. We thought, you know what, we need to basically do it ourselves. Mm. Um, and that's when we decided that we're now in the position to say to people, look. Come on board. We'll give you the high fiber. We'll give you the fast fiber, the full fiber. You know all them keywords that people are using nowadays. Mm-hmm. We'll give you all that. We'll have an SLA in there that's in place. Yes, if your business is, you know, hence the core network, good name, uh, core to you. <laughs> if if there is a core uh, piece of equipment that you need, cover it. Maybe a hardware, maybe software, maybe you know connectivity. There are ways to cover it. There are ways to prevent these attacks that people get from cyber. Mm. People will, you know, people are, you know, using outdated, you know, routers that are never patched. Mm. It's, you know, for me, that's a sin because you knew, you know, mm. if you, if you're running a business, you know that if, if I go down, I can't run my business. But what, have you done, what have you done to prevent that? Yeah. Have you put a secondary line in there? Have you put a 5G modem in there, router in there that will back you up, that will give you connectivity at least you can carry on? Yeah, certain things like phones may go down, but then have a system where you can have a diver put in place 
So fine mosaic, if you know, this is solutions that we sell. If if a, um, your phone, uh, the connectivity goes out and the phones go off, a simple press of a button diverts to a mobile. Mm. So you continue, your business continues, mm. Mm. and that's where people can fall foul. Because if people go down for two, three days, whatever the problem may be, yeah, that could finish them. Yeah, and that's it. And that's the end of it. And that's the difficult part, isn't and it? That, yeah. is, that is the difficult part. So yeah. look at where, where are your vulnerable points? Yeah, I'll say, I'll say it to everybody. Come back to my spreadsheet. Mm. Where's your vulnerable points? Yeah. Where's your <laughs> vulnerable points? Yeah, yeah spreadsheets are great. Yeah. Spreadsheets are great. Where's your vulnerable points? Once you establish your vulnerable points, just patch them. Yeah. Maybe it. hardware, maybe software. Yeah. Maybe whatever. Yeah. yeah. And th- that's what I say to my people who, who are working with. Look, I'm not their friend. Yeah. But I'll look after them as a friend. Mm. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I, I can run my business because of them. If something happens to their business, and they close down, they, whatever happens, they get cyber attack or whatever, and they go down. That's on me mm. as well, because if I if they go, I lose mm. yeah, yeah, revenue. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's in my interest to go back to them and say, you know what, guys, you need to tweak it here, you need to tweak it there. Have you thought about this? You know, so at the moment we're doing, um, you know, real time backup solutions, which is mm. I think that and cyber. So we're putting in, you know, a lot of routers, you know. Dedicated fiber uh, uh, routers like this fiber to be able to make people understand that look, we can prevent ransomware attacks. No, so it's a big statement to make, mm. but we can actually demo it to you. So we'll say, okay, this is what a ransom attack looks like. Mm. This is what happens. Yeah. This is how you prevent it. Mm. Yeah. Cost money, no. obviously. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's down to you and how you feel, uh, if anything was to happen, how you have it. Yeah. You know, how would you carry on? Mm-hmm. You know, I've known, I know people, you know, who have had my own clients who have lost three years data. Wow. Can you afford that? Yeah. They were lucky. Yeah, yeah, they were, you know, they were, they were good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, might, we might have to get the systems back up and get them back and, you know, went in there and we've, we've tightened the security on it. Yeah. Um, so, so. So lessons learned. Yeah, yeah, lessons learned. Lessons learned. Lessons learned. learned. Yeah. And some strong solutions there. Yeah. And I think it's clear to see that you've you've built strong relationships. You've done, mm-hmm. you know, you've done some incredible work in your business. And I yeah. think that's a complete credit to yourself. Mm-hmm. What we're going to do is we're just going to take a short break. Uh, and then what we'll do is actually we're going to move slightly away from the business side of it with Vikash and talk more about his personal life, a yeah. little bit about married life. And also Vikash is somebody who's rubbed shoulders uh, <laughs> with some major Bollywood stars. Uh, it is something that he was unsure of talking about. But actually, when I heard about it, I was like, <laughs> it is something that I think a lot of people would want to hear about. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we're going to talk about that after the break and we'll see you then. Hello, listeners. Welcome back to The Zoe Show. My guest for this evening is the amazing Vikash Mohan. Uh, just before the break, we were talking about uh, Vikash's early career, um, his progression as a successful businessman in the industry of IT. He's also uh, somebody who partners in a couple of other businesses, and he was talking about uh, tips around time management and also um, just, t- just tips for anybody who's actually uh, getting into business or um, people who might need advice around things like kind of how to uh, manage their time, boundaries, and a few other things. Uh, what we're going to do now is actually talk a little bit more about Vikash's early wo- early working life, about a little bit about his family, married life, and um, also how he has met major Bollywood stars <laughs> and those experiences that he's had, you know, like I said, you know, it's... It's it's all amazing actually, but I will we will touch on it as the show goes on. So Vikash, let's talk a little bit about you mentioned you mentioned your early working life yeah. and how you got into business. Yeah. Um talk to me a little bit about your family. So, you know, you've mentioned before that your uh your dad owned a, a car garage yeah. um, you know, in the seventies. Mm-hmm. So what was it like actually because like I said you're successful in IT and other businesses, what was it like growing up uh with a father who was in the car industry? Yeah, it was it was interesting because obviously, uh, dad came in 66, um, got married, uh, mom, 71, he set up the, the garage, uh, in Newtown actually. Um, and basically from there, you know, it, the family business ran from there. Um, I was nine. Yeah, I was nine when I, um, started going to the garage. So, you know, holidays as you do. 
family business, you know, holidays, six weeks holidays, Easter holidays. Actually, I used to go in the evenings as well from six to nine. Yeah, after school, I used to go from six to nine. Um, just going to the odd, the odd sods, mopping, sweeping, you know, doing, you know, tools. And I, I started actually, uh, the cashier work, I started quite early. Mm-hmm. I think I was 10 or 11 where I started doing that. So that's where I think the maths comes into it. Yeah, because in our house, we're quite, house, we're quite strong at maths. Yeah. yeah. And basically, you know, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. Again, come back the same word, enjoy, enjoyment. Mm. So I enjoyed it. So I enjoyed that, you know, talking to people, um, taking the money, just seeing just seeing it all work and, and slowly develop that, you know, oh, this is good. This is good. Um, you know, it's been so many different things. Uh, so, so, so many different things happened in Newtown at that time. Anybody who's from the, the 80s and early 90s will know that Newtown was a very interesting place. Mm. Um, you know, it was... It was different. All kinds of different things happened in Newtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, good and bad. Yeah. Good and bad. I yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, what was it like? What was it like growing up as a you know, as a young Asian lad growing up in Birmingham in that kind of in that era? What was it? What, what sort of things did you experience, or you know, what? How did you see yourself sort of fit in? You know, um, to the crowd at that time. <laughs> Or did you fit in? <laughs> no, no, it's a good one because it's a good question because, yeah, you do. Because obviously we went through, you're going from a change from what it's like now is completely different back then when we, when we were going to school. Yeah. We were the minority standard. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we had to adapt. We had to adapt to people. You know, thankfully, you know, my parents were, were, were you know, English speaking. You know, we knew the language. Yeah, that's the bonus. You know, from some of the kids that we we had back then, at that time, unfortunately, you know, language was a big barrier that we probably had to all go through at one stage of life. But you know, my parents were English speaking, therefore we spoke English. Mm. My 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 gran was um, Punjabi speaking, yeah. So that's again an advantage. Why we we learned the language, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was, we had we were two for we had we learned the Punjabi language mm. to speak to our baby, and basically. Um, English was between us and our cousins. Yeah. So we were quite, we're quite a close knit small family. Yeah. So I've got two sisters, mm-hmm. um, handful of cousins. Mm-hmm. You know, we all get on well. Yeah. My two sisters, you know, we get on. We went through life together, you know, ups and downs of life together. Um, the dad falling ill and long term, dad had a long term sick for about 30 years. Um, so that in itself teaches you as a kid. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't grow. You're not like they say. Oh, yeah. Some people they say you grow before you should have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. I wouldn't say that. we were allowed to have a childhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah? yeah, but it was different. Mm-hmm. Whereas there was play, but with a bit of responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So which I I wouldn't change for a single thing. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why could it taught me? Yeah. yeah, it taught me what life was, what life is, what it can become. Yeah. So it's like a you're, you're building yeah. you're building blocks. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on how you're being, if, if, I always say to people, people, you know, just, you know, people say, if your foundation is rubbish, it ain't going to work, is it? Mm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, you know, glad for whatever I went through. Yeah. Yeah. As a child. Yeah. It taught me, you know, so yeah, there was language barriers. There was, you know, education. And, and our parents were, you know, not strict. They were, they, they were advice that our dad used to give us and, and you know, say, look, you know, get a piece of paper. Yeah. Like, oh, what does that mean? Mm. Yeah. Get a degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you want to see? It? You say to us, I want, I want to see a photo of all of you. Yeah, with degrees. Yeah, my older sister could be far. She got about three. She's as greedy. Yeah, my older sister, she, she, she's got. got <laughs> I don't know how many she's got, but she's got quite a few. Um, and just on that note, mm-hmm. how instrumental do you think, you know, our parents or or elder family or elder people in our lives? How instrumental do you think they are towards our development? Massive. Well, you can say massive. There are things. There are things we learn ourselves. All right, there's things that happen during life experiences that make us learn as individuals. However, there's always an element of influence from the older generation. It may be feelings, understandings, you know, learnings, like actually religion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, religion is a huge one for me. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about me, me personally now. Yeah. But I, I am, you know, I won't say I'm very, very, very religious, but I like mm-hmm. parts of my religion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I try and follow what I can follow. Pass that on to my son. Mm-hmm. 
yeah uh, and say look this is why we do something yeah um beliefs you know our grand told us you know the kinds of issues the stories of what well, like in lahore so obviously where you know people were sending me from lahore mm-hmm. so one day i'll go back mm-hmm. and then um <clears throat> yeah so it, it, it it's it's good where well, i think they they do influence us a lot in a way uh, not always good <laughs> it's what good comes about but again it, it it's it's what you take and i could easily turn here and say you know i would have i wouldn't have done this if i didn't know this or this but that's everything you can always look back and say should i do it this way yeah you, you may say that mm. but as long as you've got no regrets yeah yeah i if it's almost says to me Vic, do you have you got any regret things that's happened to you in your life no i wouldn't change a single thing no. going to work with dad you know new town you know garage going work at a cinema so no oh, i am too much cinema yet so i mean i was 17 i left the garage when i work at a cinema um doing various jobs at Odeon New Street uh, as part of going to university. So I went to university. Uh, I, I used to wear, I was quite, quite, quite crazy. I used to do seven to two, three to two on Saturday and then 12 to 10 or 11 on Sunday and then back to university on Monday. Yeah. So yeah, it was mad. Yeah, it was mad, but I, I loved it. Was there, a, was there a turning point in your life where, or a moment where you thought, like my parents have, led the foundations yeah. they've taught me everything that they can do yeah what was the moment or was there a moment where you thought now i've got to now stand on my two feet and now i've got to succeed um it's difficult cuz no yeah that is a bit difficult cuz obviously with my father being and well at the time he went he was quite my early i think I was about 7 or 8 where he had various elements that I might go into um yeah so from then on we had as a family uh came together and and basically you know got through as a family to get through so quite fortunate because not everybody has that mm. not everybody has that opportunity or has people who would stand by them and say right you know what we're here we're here for you mm. and uh, that's why i think the values family values some people like them some don't it's it's it comes in different flavors mm. it's not for everybody but it is for some mm. yeah i am for one appreciated it yeah uh obviously i got my young sister my older sister you know we're close um and you know who they married and their kids so it's it's we're quite fortunate that way you know i can i know I can lean on them yeah i can lean on my sisters say you know what what's going on yeah they they think they don't think lean on me and say look we, this is what's going on which is fine um but it's it's like i say it, 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 you know people unfortunately aren't as fortunate as me i would say where i think i've been lucky where i've had along this along the way I have had my religion which is you know for me a huge impact on me as a person um you know some people might say no but I don't agree mm. but that's I would say their loss yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's not I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not here to judge anybody yeah, yeah and you know I don't think you are so you know no, 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 <laughs> no, judging anybody all. yeah we just here to say look yeah, this, yeah. this is my experience so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah so that was good so along the way I've had these hurdles which you know various you know our religion or family or friends friends I've, I've I've been lucky enough to have great friends yeah friends I've still with you know I've been 25 30 years now mm. we've been friends yeah childhood friends so from school yeah. to today we're still friends yeah it's obviously not as much as we want to but if I was to pick up the phone and say guys yeah I'm stuck yeah we are Yeah. They really nice. So it is about that. It's about what you build really. Yeah, yeah. You if you as a person will stand around and say, "Okay, you know what? I'm just going to go with the flow and let it happen." You know, you have to just you have to do you have to do a couple of things. Mm. Yeah. You have to always do something say, "Right, okay, you know what? Just be nice to people." Yeah, everyone knows me and just knows that yeah, you come and talk to me no problem. Yeah. <laughs> I don't talk too much to you. Yeah, yeah. That's just But you always able to me. help somebody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I always, I always yeah. you know, you always have to try. Mm. You always have to try. Yeah. Um and that's the reputation that you have. Hopefully I've got a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. Yeah, but you know, it, it, it is like that so. But for someone for someone who's like I said, for someone who's you know clearly had a good upbringing you've mm. succeeded mm. you know you you know you're, you're successful now and obviously you're passing your wisdom and you've given us you've given me the time on this on this show mm. 
in terms of now, like I said, you've, you know, you're married, you're a married man. Yeah. You've got, you've got a son. Yeah. Um, just talk a little bit about actually that actually. So, um, how, if you don't mind, how did you, how did you meet your, your missus? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Easy. Traditional way. Arranged marriage. <laughs> yeah. So I, my older sister came to me. Um, I should have had a photo. Hmm. She goes, what do you think? Hmm. I'm like, okay. I said, okay. <laughs> and then next week I was, I was having an interview in a, car park in Coventry from um, relatives from the other side. Yeah, they're interviewing me, asked me for free chocolate, <laughs> naturally. And then uh, I think it was, um, I don't know, Diwali. Uh, it, was some, it was some time. Yeah, some reason and I spoke, to, like, we spoke at the first time. I think I, I think I asked the question of, um, do you like with Everton? Mm. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's all. what else can I say? Yeah, it's just one of those moments and you think, yeah, yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. And then I think we went, I went October, yeah, it was October, I went 4th of October, actually. Sad now, we even dates. 4th of October, I went to uh, India, surprised my wife there. Um, 5th of got engaged. May got married. Mm. May the 18th. Photographic memory, yeah, yeah, brilliant, yeah. Registrar 15th, um, 18th was the uh, Indian wedding, yeah, Yeah. and then uh, that's it, really. That was uh, 20, 21 years ago, 21 years ago, yeah, 21 years ago. Amazing, well, congratulations, you know, first of all, you know, say, yeah, Yeah, well. Yeah. 21 years away, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm more on a cracker joke. Let's move on. <laughs> you never know who's watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All this thing, all this thing. Let's yeah. move on. Let's yeah, move yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Because, like, you know, nowadays, you know, we know that we know that the the methods and the way that people get married now are vastly different yeah. to, to maybe even when yourself, you know, when yeah. you got married. Yeah, um right. Is there, any, is there any advice you've got for people who are, let's say, seeking marriage and might be thinking, I haven't found the right person yet, you know? The easiest one, it, well, for me, it's, it's really straightforward. You know, biggest thing for me has always been respect. Mm. You've got to have respect for the other person. Yeah. I'm not going to judge everybody here because I'm not here to judge anybody. But I just feel that the way things have moved, you know, from generation to generation, I'm not sure I'll be able to in this generation. It's just, I don't get it to be honest. I'm, you know, I don't understand it all. But advice I'd give you, yeah, respect that person you're speaking to if that's what you're doing. Yeah. We speak that person, respect that person. You know, first and foremost, get, get their respect. Yeah. Understand that person. Understanding is a big thing, I think. You've got to understand the person, the likes, the dislikes. You know, read that person if you can. It's important. You've got to read that person. Yeah. To understand that person, to <clears throat> to hear from from them and say, you know what, I yeah, I get you, mm-hmm. I get you. Yeah. And I think you know, I want to touch on something very quickly about with, 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 with you know, people not being able to speak. I think that's really difficult. That's not just you know in in in, in natural situations. In in every situation, you've got to speak. You've got to speak because I I would give advice to anybody. You know, that stigma about males not being able to speak. Or a religion you can't speak, or or faith, whatever. No, no, I don't believe in that. I always, I would always love my friends to come up and, or family, or whatever, and to say, Vic, what do you think? Mm-hmm. I would make that time for them. I would make that time and say, you know what? They don't ask. They're asking for a reason. They're not. They're just asking me because they want to have a chit chat with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can do that anyway on text. Mm-hmm. But if someone comes up to me and says, you know what, Vic? What do you think? I know straight away, and you can tell certain people read body not not like people can read, but read the body language, read the room, read what what's going on, and just listen to that person. Give that time. Yeah, give that time. We haven't got a lot of people haven't got time. Hmm. This is the thing. Yeah, what do you think? As I said, a, a, a brilliant point you made there. Actually, yeah. I always find pre-pandemic, especially yeah. you know, and people made. Agree or disagree. I'd love to know your thoughts, actually. Yeah. Uh, if you'll leave comments on the, on the video here. But if, um, people, people pre pandemic, I always think, finally, you used to say, I don't have time. Mm. And then all of a sudden, then we were gifted with time. Yeah. And now we've gone back to, I don't have time again. <laughs> Why, what, what do you think? What, what, what is there something behind that? What, what's your opinion on that, on that statement? When, when, when people say, I don't have time. Yeah. What, what, how do you interpret that? See, I'm probably a bit guilty of myself. 
Yeah. Uh, and we would say, well, I haven't got time to do that. It's a comment I, I, I do sometimes use. Then when, I, when you look back and say, okay, pandemic came. So I had too much time. And I'm one of these people that you have to, I have to do something. You know, I can't sit at home. I'm not one of these that can work from home. Yeah, I had to do work from home that time. But I was a nightmare because I had too much time. Um, when people say they haven't got time, more, only I would say to them, and I'm, I've started doing it now thinking, Little bits of bit like I'm going to the gym now. I'm trying to go classes, etc. And I'm, you know, just talking to friends and family. Make that time. Go out and see people. Mm-hmm. We were locked up for two years almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rightly or wrongly, don't care. Not getting political. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you know, make that time. So when you when people say I haven't got time, yeah, the amount of time you keep saying, you keep saying it over and over and over again. Yeah, I know. You know. People tell me, hey, Vic, you say it sometimes, well, I do. I admit I do. I'm not going to say I don't. But my, my advice would be that, look, guys, make the time for yourself, first and foremost. Then make time for the people around you, loved ones, family, whatever. doesn't matter. Yeah. Make time. Communicate. Yeah. Biggest thing. Drop a text. With, come on. We've got so much social media now, Twitter, this, that, this, that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. There's so much. So, have you really got an excuse to not have time to communicate with somebody? Not really. No, no, no. Point. You've got, you've got the, 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 there's so many different methods of communication now that you can have mm. a WhatsApp, a text message. Yeah. Instagram, Twitter. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Many. It's everything. So, now. Yeah. yeah. So you've, you've got so many. Yeah. Threads. There's threads now. Wow. Well, that's that's I mean? just there's been there's released. There's yeah. going to be so many different ones and that's not going to be, you know, there, there'll be more email. You know, that's, that was, you know, the, the newest, biggest thing not long ago, but now it's that's like dated back to <laughs> to the 1900s. Or yeah, 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 <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there are. So I, I would say to people, look. Yes, you can say you, you don't make time, you have a lot of time, but do make it. Yeah. Do make it because um, it's not a great a, a great regret of mine. But I look back when when, when I asked my dad, yeah, is could I have been a bit different then towards the end? Possibly, possibly I could have. Mm. That's just my feeling. I know my, my family, if they, when they do this and this, when what's he on about? Mm. Yeah. But it's just, that, 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 there's just a few things there where I would have done something different. Um, for, I would say, I think the day when he, he had his cardiac arrest, he was coming down the stairs. I didn't turn around to a game. I regret that. Mm. So don't have a regret. Mm. Just, just little minor deals like that, I'll, I'll never forget. Yeah. But at that moment, I was sitting there, I was playing, and I, I didn't turn around and look at him. Mm. And I regret that. Mm. I didn't look at that. Look at that. I didn't turn around and look at my dad. Yeah. yeah. So, but like I said, make time. Yeah. Make time. Yeah. yeah. Make time. You can, there's no excuse for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, you, you, know, you, you, you showed a very, you showed a very personal thing there mm. about, about your own father, mm. you know, and you yourself now are mm. a father to yeah. a, a 19 year old son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, you, you mentioned there about communication methods, things like social media, mm. Um, mm. you know, which I'm, I'm sure your son's on social media, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and what youngsters are not on social media now, mm. but you yourself, for someone who works in IT and you, you clearly somebody who's clued up on technology, yeah. what's your thoughts on things like social media and the growth of it and things like threads coming out now, um, you know? I've got mixed, mm. okay? Because like I said, I am IT, so I do see the benefits, but I also see the other side as well, mm. yeah? So one of the things I've, I've, I've seen is got room for the kids. Mm. They won't talk. What are they doing? They're WhatsApping each other, Snapchatting each other, yeah? What's that about? No need for that. Yeah. Mm. You know, language is unbelievable. LOL. Mm. What for? <laughs> What's that about? Why? Yeah. Why? There's no need. Yeah. There's no need. Mm. Just say, I'm, um, you know, you're happy or mm. <laughs> whatever. And, th- and th- that's something for me. It, it, even though I don't mind the growth of social media, yeah, interaction. What I don't like though, and <clears throat> something which, which people do do is, you know, the trolling and, you know, abusing people, may it be from football stars to any individual. Mm. Yeah. No need for that. No need for that. Yeah. Just, just be nice. Just be polite. You know, communicate as a family talk. Yeah. My son, example. Yeah. He's on his WhatsApp and he's on there. Still talk though. Mm-hmm. I still make sure. That we do have, you know, we do talk, you know. If there's a question I'm asking him, I want what, what I ask him. Okay, if we're not with him, I, I might send him a message. Mm. Otherwise, always, always verbal. 
mm. always. It has to be. Yeah. yeah, it has to be verbal. Um, you know, and, and, and you know, pick up the phone and call. Yeah, no, there's no, you know, there's no excuses you. now. Yeah, no. you get unlimited meetings with most contracts nowadays. Yeah, 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 yeah most of yeah. your contracts that people are on. Yeah, if they have a contract, it's unlimited meetings. Yeah, they yeah, give yeah. them away. They give them away. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, there's no excuse. But social media, I, the whole, I have, you know, like I said, pros and cons. Pro is, yeah, we're moving on as as a society. Um, some rightly, some wrongly. But there are unfortunately some negatives, yeah. um, which we're gonna have to accept. Yeah, yeah. And people who won't, who don't accept social media, who think no, it will eventually go, it will die. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's only going to expand. There are anyway, different, different things, different, different methods. You know, yeah. you look at some of these futuristic films, mm. you know, Back to the Future, for argument's sake. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. just things like that. Yeah, just yeah. things like that. It's as crazy as that. Yeah, yeah. It's, where it's, it, you yeah. won't, you it, you won't stop it now. Yeah, yeah. If people think, oh, we will stop back, and the only thing we'll stop it is if someone takes out the internet. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen either. Yeah, yeah. he's got satellites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But so, the growth of social networks ah, is absolutely amazing. You won't, you won't and on that, and on that note, in terms of how youngsters are on social media mm. and how they can protect themselves mm. or who they follow, mm. and this is what maybe people have been waiting for for me to mention is that you we mentioned that you've met film stars oh, yeah, from the right. from from the Bollywood world, yes. and these film stars. But and again, we've got people from you know we've got film stars today who are all over social media, yeah. and these older film stars are on social media. Yeah. Um, but what was it like growing up seeing these film stars? So there's two parts to this question, really. What mm. was it? What was it like when you when you saw these film stars? Yeah. And what do you think? What do you think kids can do nowadays to protect themselves from almost like because they see. You know, money, cars, yeah. women, yeah. all these different all things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look at film stars, for example. Mm. Um, but what, what do you think, what do you think sort of children can do nowadays to, let's say, prevent themselves from almost like wanting that lifestyle? Yeah, yeah, that's the top. Yeah. When I, when I first met, so big example, kid, kid grew up in the late seventies, eighties. I was Everton. Mm. That's it. Stop there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> same, that's same it. For me. Yeah, same yeah, for me. he was the one. So yeah. when, I, when, I, when we, so I was working at the, uh, at a cinema at the time and um, they used to do like, like weeks of films and pre- premieres and stuff and I was like, but I didn't came to the Odeon. Yeah, and um, we were all excited. Yeah, so all the is there just going crazy. Mm. <laughs> he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. <laughs> When's he coming? So, when he actually came, so we actually see him. I, I, I won't forget it ever because he, he, he we, I, I was on the opposite side and he, he walked in. We used to be like a, a bit of a fish shape. Mm. Imagine a fish shape and we're on either side. Mm. That's counters. Mm. And he walked in and I'll tell you what I froze. Mm. I already know what to think. Mm. You know what to say. Oh my goodness, look who he is. Mm. And you know, it's like, you're thinking, wow. Mm. <laughs> so it was so daunting. Mm. When we went, when we met my, um, my cousin won Bollywood a bust mm. and we went for two weeks to India. Yeah. Uh, I can't say thank you to him so much, but that was just an unbelievable experience. Got to see Anil Kapoor, Salman Khan, Sri Shetty, Shah Rukh Khan. We got to meet all of them. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Shilpa Shetty was, this is uh, before her big brother mm. stardom. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, loads. Singers, artists, punctures ass, you know, mm. classical singers, you know, great. Um, so yeah, it, 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 it's daunting. It's, it is daunting because you think, wow, mm. you know, those people you see, you say, oh, you've grown up watching mm. and they're in front of you. Yeah. You can almost touch them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So actually, we just shake hands with uh, a lot, you know. I was trying to shake hands with mm. and I, I wasn't going to wash my hands for a week, but I thought I better. <laughs> you know I mean? so, yeah, so it, 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 it's very daunting and it can be very intimidating. Yeah. Which I think is what could lead to, and when kids do see now, because you got to think on social media, there's a, a Snapchat, Instagram, there's a, you know, a tweet, a video goes up. And what do they see? They see their stars walking around, partying, gym, you know, cars. Yeah, millions of likes, cars, this and that, yeah, followers. The glitter, the drama. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's because you only see the one side of it. Mm. If you actually look into it and read and, and follow and what actually happens, there's quite a dark side to it all as well. And that's where majority of us would fall into. Yeah, you might get the occasional one or two 
or maybe three who would get to that stardom, that, that, that glitter. The rest of us fall into stardom, very deep black hole. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sleazy side of the world that, you know, I don't want to mention it because it's not a very yeah, yeah. dimensional, but yeah. there's a side of it which, you know, you, you can, you read about it, and me being in IT, have seen. Mm-hmm. So when in, in part of the security jobs that, you know, I've worked in, I've seen the dark side of, mm-hmm. of certain things. Yeah. You know, the manipulation of, you know, things. You know, I'm not going to go into detail. But yeah, I've seen that side of it where you think, wow. That goes on. That's the truth. That's the yeah. truth. And that is the solid, that is the real truth. That, yes, it's all good to follow them, watch their movies, whatever. Yeah? Fine. But if you think that there's a, you know, a star in everybody, yeah, they can be in their own way. Mm. You're, you're always a star in your own life. Mm. Yeah? But don't chase that. Yeah. That, I, I would say, strongly say to people not to chase it because... Yeah. Very few are going to do it. Yeah. You just get, so many people get manipulated. You're hearing it all the time now with all the different people. You know, again, I'm not going to go into details with certain, you know, people that have come on the news, you know. It's not just in, in Bollywood. You look at Hollywood. Mm. Yeah. It's full of sleaze rubbish. Mm. You know, it's full of it. And, and, and it's, it's a shame mm. that, you know, there's a lot at the moment. I've got a lot of, you know, things that we've watched when we were growing up, you know, films, etc. you know, following film stars and, and what's coming out now? Mm. They're all manipulated, mm. whatever, in any situation. Yeah. And it kind of bursts the bubble, doesn't it, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's your kind of, just as we sort of come to the close, what, what's your biggest advice to either children or anyone who is on, you know, social media mm. or when they're sort of, when they're on these apps or, yeah. or whatever it is, yeah. how can they protect themselves from, like I said, spamming, hacking, yeah, yeah, yeah. all these different trolling and, you know, I mean, we hear a lot about hacking nowadays. Yeah. But in general, what do you think, like I said, anyone can do to prevent themselves from, you know, from being vulnerable or exposed on social yeah, media? Yeah, you got, this, yeah. You got two, this, I do it from two angles. I do it from a parent's side yeah. and I do it from a child's side. Yeah. yeah. So from a parent's perspective, I, I got to that age, I got my question, my son asked me, can we go on? My niece, my nephew said, we want to go on. Okay, if you want to go on to, I think at the time it was Instagram and, and Facebook, etc. Easy, okay, fine, you want to go on it? No problem. First person you add as a friend is me. <laughs> yeah. Simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had the duty in the household, in our family, that my I was the first. So mama, was, mama is the first friend mm-hmm. you have. And there's more friends today, even though, you know, they, they rarely need to have the 20s now, so they can do whatever they want, um, to an extent. But yeah, um, yeah, so, so from a parent's perspective, it's like, okay, trust your child. Yeah. Give them that respect. There is again, mm. that word. Mm. Massively important to me is respect. Mm. Yeah. If you feel comfortable, let them go on. Again, there are age restrictions there. So a 10 year old, 11 year old, no, it's, it's 12, 13, 40 onwards. Mm. The restrictions there are for a reason. You know, it, it, it's one where another one of my issues is people playing games that, they shouldn't be playing. Mm. You got 15s and 18s for a reason. Yeah, age, age movies. Ratings. Yeah, age yeah. ratings. So you got age ratings for movies, for games, for apps. Yeah. They're there for a reason. Mm. Us as parents. Yeah. Your time will come. Mm. Us as parents. Mm. Yeah. Um, basically, you know, uh, we have to take responsibility for that. So I did. So I, I've various things like, you know, adding, adding the kids on, on, on Facebook. You know, I, you know, in the posting, I can make sure I can see. Yeah. Mm. I actually, I used to, I to say to, no, well, no, look, don't, don't say that, man. Mm. Don't get into that kind of debate. Mm. Yeah. So it's just a simple, you know, watch what you're doing. That's all. Mm. And, 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 and trust yeah. and respect. Yeah. And so but from a child's perspective, yeah. Again, be a child. Don't try and be an adult yet. Mm. Love your childhood because in a flash it's gone. Mm. Yeah. Before you know it, school takes over. Homework takes over, college takes over, mm. university if you do go, or if you go on to other things, you know, there's other ways, you know, because you're but there's other things that you can go on to. And then before you know it, you're working. Mm. And there you are, you're on the grind. <laughs> you're on the grind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're in that grind, aren't you? You're in that yeah. grind and, yeah, um, just enjoy it, really. Enjoy Enjoy, enjoy, yeah. enjoy yourself. Yeah, enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. But just take care. Yeah, yeah. Take care because there's, nowadays is is difficult where 
you've got a lot more people who use these social media sites, unfortunately, for the wrong reasons. Yeah, you've got people who, who use it to basically, you know, manipulate young children. Uh, and, and that's a shame mm. because they've taken the, you know, the joy out of certain things. Mm. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so as again, come back to parents, just monitor what your kids are doing. Monitor. And it is easily done. Yeah. How will you do it? You know, I use Apple products. I'm not going to push Apple products, but I do. Mm. And, you know, I can restore, well, I used to be able to restore my my uh, son's phone to my phone if I wanted to mm. in less than 20 minutes. Right. Right. What's, what's the boy been up to? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> And I, he knew. Yeah. I told him. I told him from the outset. That, you know, you do know that, don't you? Mm. I can restore your phone. I, you know, I can find, I know where you are. Mm. Yeah. So there's apps out there. Where's my child? Oh, he's here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's going, you know, from the age of 11, he could have trained himself. Mm. School. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we, we knew where he was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot there. I mean, look, it's a hell of a lot. you know, look, if somebody, you know, <laughs> like I said, I think we've covered a lot about protecting businesses, yeah, like protecting family, protecting children. Yeah. You know, you are the protector of a lot of things, <laughs> you know, and I think, <laughs> oh, I, you know, I think, listen, I think people should have picked up a lot of nuggets from today. So, so. And like I said, you know, uh, I think there's so many things that we have covered. However, do you have any sort of closing thoughts or final, final reflections? Just, um, simple case, all round enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy yourselves, respect other people, speak to people, communicate with people, and just, you know, try and and fight the demons that you have. Mm. It's easier said than done. You know, I you know, I'm I'm a very positive person. People who know me will know that, you know what, this guy he's he's positive and he'll he'll push. But there's demons out there that you don't you don't need to carry. Mm. You don't need to, you can fight them. Mm. You can fight them. Just have that mindset. Say, you know what, I can deal with this, I can fight this. Communicate. Yeah. Don't don't really burden you to an extent where you think I can't cope. Yeah, there's gonna be somebody there for you. Mm. Just find them. Yeah, That's yeah. It. There's always someone to help. There's always somebody to help. Yeah. You. Just find them, speak to them, and hopefully get over it. Yeah, yeah. I think this has been fantastic. Honestly, we have shared so That's much wisdom with Cash. Honestly, and I really, I'm so grateful that you came on today. We've spoken about business. We've spoken about family we've spoken about social media you know so many different angles of things i really really want to thank you for your time today and appreciate you you know everything that you've shared today i really hope people who've been listening or watching on you know on the podcast uh can 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 reflect they can give some input please do uh please do comment you know please do let us know uh you know if you have enjoyed the show uh but that's it for tonight everyone you know like i said big cash has been absolutely amazing uh we'll be back like i said weekly next week uh we'll have another guest so do uh, look out for the updates on that uh but that has been the zo show ladies and gents and like I said, please do like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for all our updates. And uh, we shall see you next time. Thank you very much. <laughs>